Hello family and friends. I greet you all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I do believe and trust that God has kept you well and preserved you by his grace. Welcome to the sharing of God's word today. Shall we pray? Our Heavenly Father, we are grateful to you this time. Thank you for allowing us the privilege of once again sitting to listen to your word. We are so blessed to have this conscious awareness that the entrance of your word brings light. And therefore we ask as we share your word today, let the light shine upon us. Let your life flow in us freely. And let us be built up and edified. Draw us to yourself more, Father, and position us in such a way that in us and through us, you will be glorified. And so we just offer ourselves to you. Give us a hearing ear as your word comes through. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, I want to embark on uh, a sharing that I believe again will take us a few uh, sessions as we look at what I'm calling order, bringing order in our lives. Now I'll be talking about order uh, in the next few sessions. On another platform, I've uh, embarked on a series I'm calling Developing a Hearing Ear and uh, that would uh, help you a lot if you can have time to listen to the same because it is a complementary to this one. The two, uh, you know, sharings from this platform and that other platform of the Apostolic Resource Table, the Art Forum, the sharing here and that other sharing will be complementing each other. And if you can, you know, create time to listen to both, you will do good to yourself. Order is what we talk about here today. You cannot represent God if you have no order in your life. I want to begin at that point because by now, we do know and we are consciously aware that we are on earth for the purpose of representing God, revealing God on earth, revealing God through our life, in our work, in our business, in our endeavors, you know, in, in all that has to do with our lives. And so it's important for us to begin the point of understanding that we cannot represent God if we have no order in our life. You will not be able to do so. God is a God of order. And does not work in an environment of chaos or disorder. We see that right from the onset in the account of creation in Genesis chapter number one. Right there, God creates and sets everything systematically and sequentially, resulting to a seamless flow of life and creation. One thing divinely sets stage for the next. And you can see the kind of order that we have in that environment. So one cannot fail to notice order in creation. Heaven and then the earth. It begins by saying that God created the heaven and then the earth. That in itself is deliberate. That's order already. You know, he puts one over the other. That's order. Heaven and then the earth. Light and then the firmament. Dry land and then the vegetation. The light, you know, here the sun for the day and the moon for the night and so on and so forth. He goes on systematically with one thing divinely setting stage for the next. Then he lastly creates man, blesses the man, places the man in the garden, provides for the man's sustenance, defines the boundaries of man, you know, to him, and then uh, gives man the assignment that he should be engaged in, and then he gives him a wife. You can see the kind of order that God has here. No room for chaos. You know, no room for chaos. There is an environment of great order. Now, it is in this environment that God put man with such great order. It is in this environment that God visited man in the cool of the day. Uh, and that one now is the account of Genesis chapter 1, chapter 2, and uh, chapter number 3 uh, before the fall. God would visit man in an environment that was highly orderly. So we have to order uh, our lives in such a way that God can walk with us. We have to have order in our lives for us to walk with God and to serve him. God is a God of order and God's grace does not flow in an environment of chaos. Neither does his presence abide therein. And you can see the environment that God put man was an environment of tremendous order. There was such order in the environment. Of course, you do know that there is order in the life of man at this point. Because a man at this point, he is perfect. He is, there is no sin in him. There is no chaos 
in his life. So there is order internally that is in the man and there is order externally. And so the man is living in an environment of perfect order internally and externally and he is therefore able to execute the will of God and God himself is continually and consistently visiting man in this environment of order. And so if we want to walk with God and serve God acceptably, we must bring order in our lives. In Exodus chapter 4, verse 24 to 26, the story of Moses when God has sent Moses to go to Egypt, Exodus 4, 24 to 26. And it came to pass on the way at the encampment that the Lord met him and sought to kill him. Then Zipporah took a sharp stone and cut off the foreskin of her son and cast it at Moses' feet and said, Surely you are a husband of blood to me. So he let him go. Then she said, You are a husband of blood because of the circumcision. Now, after God had called and sent Moses to represent him in Egypt and given such a, an elaborate assignment to Moses, even to the, last, the details of the last you know, plague that would befall Egypt, which has to do with the killing of the firstborn son. Moses has all that given to him by God. Now, but after God has sent Moses to represent him in Egypt, then he almost kills Moses. When Moses set off to fulfill that assignment before he put order in his life and in his family. Moses had ignored and neglected the covenant of circumcision which God had already established with Abraham his father. All right? You see, and so what is happening here? By Moses neglecting this covenant, ignoring this covenant, and not working in this covenant, Moses was going to limit God in his life. And so God was not going to, would not have been able to fulfill and perform in and through Moses what he had already showed to Moses. So Moses had to live and walk within the confines of this covenant between his father Abraham and God. But Moses had ignored this. And so what happens? God is almost killing Moses because he has not put order in his own life. God's grace, God's wisdom, God's anointing does not flow where there is no order. Order in the life of a son of God attracts divine resources necessary for accurate representation of God and his will. And that's very important for us to understand. This is why God is almost killing Moses because there's no order in his life. And let me repeat that statement again. Order in the life of a son of God attracts divine resources that are necessary for accurate representation of God and his will. When God positions you wherever he positions you, and God expects you to reveal and manifest him wherever you are, God expects there to be order in your life, you to order your life in such a way that grace can freely flow. Amen? Grace can freely flow. That order is what attracts divine resources. Let me give an example uh, of humility. When you humble yourself, the inner posture of a heart of heart and man, you have brought order within the government of humility is already prevalent within you. Then what happens? You attract grace and greatness. Watch this. James chapter 4 verse number 6. But he gave more grace. Therefore he says, God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. James chapter 4 verse 10. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he will lift you up. I hope you can notice here. He says you humble yourself, he will lift you up. He gives grace to the humble. So you must have that humility within you. That You, you must order your life. A government of humility is within you, and then that's what attracts the grace. 1 Peter chapter number 5, uh, verse 5 to 6. It says, Likewise, you younger people, submit yourselves to your elders. Yes, all of you be submissive to one another and be clothed with humility. For God resists the proud but gives grace to the humble. Verse, seven say, verse 6 says, Therefore humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time. 
And so when we have this kind of humility within us, we have brought order in our lives, we have brought humility in our lives, that is what attracts grace. When you are, you know, uh, when, when you order your inner life, when you are in, in order within your inner life, and set in place a government of humility, you attract grace and greatness from God. Why? Because where grace freely flows, greatness is inevitable. Very important. Where grace freely flows, greatness is inevitable. But for grace to flow, there must be humility. There must be inner order. When we ignore divine order in our lives, we limit the working of God in us. And, of course, through us. We shall see this later, more of this at a later stage. The word order, what does order mean? Order is the state in which everything is in its correct or appropriate place. Everything is in correct, it's in correct, uh, it's correct and appropriate place. It's a state in which there is conformity with the law or decorum. Very important word there. Conformity with the law. All right? Order is, a, is the prescribed or established procedure followed. When you follow that which has been already established, the procedures established and you know, the, the prescribed procedures, when you follow that, then you are, you are putting order in your life. Order is a condition of proper arrangement, organization, setup. In other words, things being in their expected place. Order is about things being in their expected place. And that's what we are saying. You must put order in your life. Things must be in their expected place. Order is to govern, is to regulate, is to direct, is to rule, is to fit in. So what are you fitting in? You're fitting into the established procedures. You are conforming with the law that is put in place. Everything is getting its correct place. Everything is being positioned in its place, appropriate place. That's what we're talking about. So we have to ensure that everything in our life is in its correct and or appropriate place. We can't afford to be casual and careless. Everything about us must be in its correct place, must be in conformity with the law of God. It must be very well organized and structured and arranged to conform to God's will. So we have to live and govern every aspect of our life by the divinely established procedures for life and ministry as revealed in the word of God. So God has the divinely, you know, set procedures for life and ministry. Okay? Now these ones are revealed in the word of God. And so we must have our lives arranged, divinely planned in that very order. These are the laws and regulations that control our behavior, whether in private or in public, and we are expected to observe and obey them. We, we have to bring order in our lives, both privately and publicly. Brothers and sisters, every aspect of your life has to fit in the divine design and be regulated and governed by divine laws and principles. Let me, let me just give a summary of what order is. So in summary, having order in your life means living how you ought to live. Living how you ought to live. Why? Simply means everything is in its correct place. Everything is in its appropriate place. Everything is in conformity with the law of God. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus. Now the word uh, order in Hebrew is the word kun which means to organize, arrange, set up, position, kun, to organize, arrange, set up, position. In Greek, the word order is taxis. It means arrangement, organized, orderly condition, fixed succession, sequence, dignity. And I want to carry that word dignity. So you have to arrange and organize your life according to the design given by God. Everything about your life has to be in its correct and appropriate place. It's got to be a life that has dignity in the sight of God. So a life of order, when we are saying we are bringing order in our lives, we are saying we are bringing dignity in our lives. That means a life that is worthy and honorable in the sight of God. That's what we are saying. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 14, 40, 
Let all things be done decently. All things be done decently and in order. It doesn't say most of the things. It doesn't say many of the things. It doesn't say some things. It doesn't say the things that matter. It says let all things, all things, whatever it is, all things, the way you walk, the way you live, the way you dress, the way you talk, the way you labor, the way you eat in current quarantine or whatever, let all things be done. It is whether it is giving or it's prayer or it is fasting, let all things be done decently and in order. Whether it's a Sunday, you know, gathering together of the saints or a corporate gathering of the church in a city church or whatever thing that we are being engaged in, whether it's your marriage or parenting, you know, whatever form of life in the kitchen, in the sitting room, in the bedroom, let all things be done decently and in order. The word decently means acceptable standards of respectful behavior. Let all things be done in an acceptable standard of respectful behavior. It means satisfactorily. So let all things be done satisfactorily. The word order here is the, uh, the, the meaning of the word order in this verse is fixed succession sequence arrangement so let all things be done satisfactorily in a fixed arrangement a fixed succession in sequence of course we know the context here has got to do with the people who are coming and eating before the others and they are not waiting for others you know there was disorder in the way they were running the operations that's why paul is saying let all things be done in uh, sequence so we can't afford the chaos in our life beloved we have to be organized and orderly in the way we think and execute those thoughts you have to be organized you have to be orderly in your thinking and in the execution of those thoughts we have to have decency and order your thoughts must be decent and orderly praise the name of the lord jesus because if you see if your thoughts are disorganized and indecent then it simply means your life will be indecent and disorderly there are thoughts we must not entertain. There are thoughts we must refuse. We must resist. There are thoughts we cannot quote in us. Because the thoughts you entertain and quote become the very life that you will live. And if thoughts are disorganized, are indecent, your life will be disorganized and indecent. Inner chaos, that's inner disorder in our lives, is revealed in our physical life. If we have no order within us, then it is going to be seen in the way our physical life will be. We are too disorganized, brothers and sisters. And we carry a lot of unnecessary things within us. And these things, you know, we, we, we only have a sentimental attachment with them. But they add no value to us. You just need to look at our physical life. Look at our life. Look at around us. Look at your house. Look at things around you. Look at your office. Look at your desk. Look at, look at things around you. And you'll be amazed to see the kind of disorder you have externally. And this points to something internally. For example, look at men and old motor vehicle spare parts. You know, you wonder what is the problem. We take a car to the garage, the car is fixed, and then you find me carrying old shock absorbers. You find me carrying an old spare. The spare part that the mechanic has removed, he keeps it for me. I keep it and take it home. For heaven's sake, what is it for? Just because you bought a car, it cost you money. Then you want to keep this, you know, this tumor there. You want to keep this uh, spare part. For heaven's sake, what is it for? All the tires, you have, you have changed and fixed the tires, new tires, and you want to carry the old ones and take them home. You know, and so what happens? Behind, behind there, behind there, you know where I'm talking about? You, you go and try to keep those tires. What are they for? You see, women and empty cooking fat containers. You go to the kitchen, look at the empty cooking fat containers that are there. We always say this one can be used for something. We can use this to put something. And, and they never, we never exhaust the something to put in there. Right? Look at us and our old images and video clips. They fill our phones. We don't want to delete those images. We don't want to delete those video clips. What are they for? They are simply filling up your phone. You have no space. You are struggling. And even when you go to delete, you still delete some and you leave some. You don't want to delete them. You have a sentimental attachment with them. They add no value. Our desks are overcrowded. Our handbags 
uh, and uh, you know overcrowded you just need to look to, to to look at a lady or watch a lady when she's looking for her phone in a handbag that's when you will know how much disorder we have right look at the old and fading atm receipts they fill our wallets and handbags our inability to manage our sleeping and waking up hours we can't we can't even decide what time to be sleeping and we, we can't have order in our sleeping and waking up that's how bad things are clumsy bedrooms and wardrobes inability to manage and account for the hours of our days we don't know how time has gone on beloved all these and more are external things which point to an internal problem they point to internal issues and so we must carry our lives with dignity as children of god we must begin to shed off what needs to be shed off we must lay off what needs to be laid off for effective uh, you know, fulfillment of the apostolic mandate, right? For us to be effective in the apostolic mandate. And this mandate simply is dominion through authentic representation of God and his will. That's our apostolic mandate. Apostolic mandate. Dominion through authentic representation of God and his will. Now, for us to be effective in this mandate, there has to be order in our lives. We have to live how we ought to. To live that's what we're talking about order living how you ought to live if those we are reaching out to if those that we want to you know reveal god to if those that we want to to show the grace of god to if they don't see order in us they will not embrace that what we tell them they will not embrace what we are carrying you see but when you live your life with order you will have you don't have to advertise yourself. You'll have, you'll have no need to advertise yourself. If you live your life with order, you bring order in your life, you will not have to advertise yourself. It is visible. It's evident. You don't have to advertise yourself. Look at First Kings chapter number 10. I want you to see the story of the Queen of Sheba visiting Solomon. First Kings chapter 10, verse 4 to 7, just a few verses there. And when the queen of Sheba had seen all the wisdom of Solomon, the house that he had built, the food on his table, the sitting of his servants, the service of his waiters and their apparel, his cupbearers, and his entryway by which he went up to the house of the Lord, there was no more spirit in her. Glory to the living God. And I want you to take note that from the house of Solomon, he was going up. He went up to the house of the Lord. He elevated the house of the Lord over his own house. He went up to the house of the Lord. We must come that place where this is the priority. Seek first the kingdom of God. That's the priority. God's house must be elevated over your own house. That from your house, you ascend to the house of the Lord. Verse number six. Then she said to the king, it was a true report which I had in my own land about your words and your wisdom. However, I did not believe the words until I came and saw with my own eyes. And indeed, the half was not told me. Your wisdom and prosperity exceed the fame of which I had. So Solomon had lived such a life with such order and such excellence that news had reached the queen of Sheba. When she came and she saw the reality of these things, the Bible says, there was no more spirit in her. That's the power of order. If we bring order in our lives, we don't have to advertise ourselves. Those that God intends for us to communicate to those that God intends for us to reach out to, those that God intends for us to impact and impart something in, we will do it when they see order in our lives. Paul says to the Colossians church in uh, uh, chapter 2, Colossians chapter 2, verse 5, For though I am absent in the flesh, yet I am with you in spirit, rejoicing to see your good order and the steadfastness of your faith in Christ. Good order. We must have good order in our life. Blessed be God in the highest. There must be good order in your life. We need to order our life, not just externally, but much more internally. An ordered internal life is seen in an ordered manner of life. Let me say this to us, brothers and sisters. We accomplish more by having order in our life than we do by having many words. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. 
We accomplish more by having order in our life than we do by having many words. Because you see, the many words you are speaking, they sometimes they bore, sometimes they, they are inaccurate, sometimes your pride comes in because of your ability to express yourself with eloquence. And those, those of us who are able to design pride, we feel put off. Some of these people just feel put off. But when they see order in your life, they cannot ignore. They will want to know what is it that you know they don't know that there is such order in your life. And so even in our spiritual transactions, we have to have order. Amen. We have to have order. First Kings chapter number 18, verse 32 through to 39. Let's look at Elijah, uh, you know, lifting up a sacrifice here. First Kings 18, 32 to 39. Then with the stones, he built an altar. This is where now Elijah is having a contest with the prophets of Baal. All right. They have been cutting themselves. They have been shouting and crying. They are calling for fire. They are calling on their gods to, you know, to send fire. But nothing is happening. Now Elijah shows up with his thing. It says, Then with the stones he built an altar in the name of the Lord. As a beginning point, he first of all builds an altar. Praise the name of Jesus. He said, an altar is that point in the spirit for us in our day, that place in the spirit where the natural and the divine meet. That's very important. An altar is a place in the spirit where the natural and the divine meet. And we know that Christ is our altar. That's where the natural and the supernatural meet. That's where man and God meet in Jesus Christ. You know, God and man met in Jesus. And that's why it's very important for us to always uh, bring the place of Jesus in our lives as a fast. All right, so he sets up an altar. And he made a trench around the altar, large enough to hold two seers of, uh, of seed. Verse 33. And he put the wood in order. Come on now. He put the wood in order. He didn't just place wood in the house. He put it in order. He put it in order. Elijah understands the principle of order because he wants to attract the fire of God. Fire falls where there is order. Hallelujah. So he puts wood in order because he wants fire of God to light up the wood. So there must be order in the wood. Then he cut the bull in pieces and laid it on the wood, which already has order, and said, fill four water pots with water. For the apostolic number. So he's conscious of his apostolic assignment. He knows for me to fulfill this apostolic mandate, I have to be orderly. And pour it on the burnt sacrifice and on the wood. Right? Pour it on the wood. Let everything be soaked up in the word. Verse 34. Then he said, do it a second time. And they did it a second time. And he said, do it a third time. And they did it a third time. Time. Now, Paul understand, uh, you know, these principles. He's just number three, perfect. So you want the word of God to be, the, the wood to absorb the word of God perfectly. Wood also is symbolic of man in his weakness. Man must ab completely absorb the word of God for the fire to fall because the word of God that brings order. He says, pour water the first time, the second time, the third time. Let this wood and let this altar be soaked up with water, with the word perfectly so. Oh, blessed be God in the highest. What happens next? Verse 35. So the water ran all around the altar, and he also filled the trench with water. Everything is now saturated with the word. You see, there cannot be divine order in your life if you don't bring in the word. It is the word that brings order. A life that is orderly is a life full of the word. It's a life that is governed by the word. Verse number 36. And it came to pass, at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice. Now watch the wisdom of this man. As he does all these things, he's also waiting on the timing. He knows the timings. He doesn't just begin to do things you know, in a howl. He is so orderly. He knows the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice. God had set the time. Elijah knows the time. And he wants to connect the offering with the time. The sacrifice with the time. What an ordered man he is. The man knows how to order his affairs. He knows how to order his things. He knows how to order his life. He knows how to order his sacrifice. I don't just want to give it. I will give it at the right time. Let me say this, brothers and sisters. 
the first thing that you know, the first that happens in your life when you become a man of order is a question of time. You learn how to manage time. Until we learn to manage time, we still have not understood order. Right? At the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice, that Elijah the prophet came near and said, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, let it be known this day that you are God in Israel and I am your servant and that I have done all these things at your word. You see that? All these things at your word. Elijah was simply responding to the word. The order is brought in his life by the word. So as you act and program and adjust your life according to the word, that's how order comes in your life. Blessed be the name of the Lord. When you begin to conform to the laws and the principles of God and the, the principles that are in, you know, in the word, you know, the kingdom principles embodied in the word, when you begin to conform to them, then you're bringing order in your life. He says, hear me, O Lord, hear me, that these people may know that you are the Lord God and that you have turned their hearts back to you again. Because you see, the purpose of divine order is for the heart to turn to God. Why are we bringing order in our lives? So that our hearts can belong to God fully. Blessed be God. Then, verse 38, then, after this, this order, after everything has been put in place, divine order is now established according to the word of the Lord. Verse 38 says, then, and only then when there is order, the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice and the wood, and the stones, and the dust, and it licked up the water that was in the trench. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Fire falls where there is order. And when fire falls, it consumes everything. I pray that will come that time where our lives are fully consumed by the fire of God. Nothing of us is visible, but that our life become a sweet-smelling aroma to God. Flesh has been fully consumed. Verse 39 says, Now when all the people saw, Amen. Order is visible. When all the people saw it, they fell on their faces and they said, The Lord, He is God. The Lord, He is God. God showed up in an environment of order. Where there is no order, God does not show up. I want to repeat a statement I said. Grace does not flow where there is no order. And the presence of God does not reside where there is no order. We have to bring divine order even in our life, brothers and sisters. We have to bring divine order even in our sacrifice, the way we carry our sacrifices. Our apostolic mandate must be executed in a very orderly way. Our apostolic mandate places a demand for order in our individual and corporate life. Individually and as a house, we must have order. Praise the name of the Lord. God's assignment for your life, God's calling upon you, demands for order in your life, living how you ought to live. It's when you bring your life to order that grace begins to flow, anointing begins to flow, the presence of God becomes a reality in you, and then in you and through you, the kingdom of God is revealed. I want to conclude by saying this. You can't train and execute. You can't train and exercise dominion with a mind of disorder. You can't live and execute God's will with a mind of disorder. You and I cannot reign in life with Christ when we have disorder. We must bring order back into our life. I want to stop with the introduction at that point and encourage you brothers and sisters to pursue divine order so that the grace of God can flow in you in an unhindered way. So, Father, we thank you again today because of your word. We pray that you bring us a place where our lives can be so ordered that your grace flows freely, that your presence is manifested in us and through us, so that in us and through us you can be glorified. Help us, Father, to bring order in our lives, in our finances, in our marriage, in our jobs, in our speech, in our thoughts, in all aspects of our lives to bring order for your own glory in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Well, I want to put a comma there. We'll pick it up further next week. 
as we keep pursuing this thought on bringing order in our lives. Well, before then, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among all those who are sanctified. Till next time, God bless you.